In this video, we're going to go ahead and build the torso for our character and talk a little bit about edge spiders and where not to put them. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is create our live surface. Let's go ahead and do the live surface setup, and then we'll go into our modeling toolkit. And we'll go ahead and select our character topology and select quad draw. Now that we're in quad draw, let's go ahead and get started. The way I usually start with this is I'll create a ring going around each of these areas where I'm going to have the topology crease during animation. So I want to create a ring of faces connecting to the torso. So I'll go ahead and do that first. In this one, I want to make sure I maintain that line going up the side of the character so I can UV map it in that fashion. And I'll go ahead and create some of these points going around this character topology. Now sometimes I might have to get a little clever getting in between the legs. You can create one face on one side, then drag that edge across to the opposite side, and then you can create the other face. So if you're having problems in between the leg, that is one way of going about it. Then you can just go ahead and clean up that edge by just moving it back so it lines up a little bit better. Now that we have this ring going around this topology here, let's go ahead and add one going around the arm because we have this edge loop that's going to be creasing right here under the arm. So we want to add a ring of faces separating that from the rest of the geometry. Again, I want this edge to be set up to where I can have that line going right down the side. So I'm going to go ahead and move that a bit. I might move this just a tad so as to fit the geometry a bit better, shaping rather. And I'll go ahead and add some more edges here, going around the arm to protect, uh -oh, protect that face there. Okay, and this is all set up here. Now let's go ahead and create a neck real quick. I'll just create a quick three-face neck, something very simple. We can add more edges to it if necessary. So I'm going to add one face here. I want this edge line to go right here along this neck. So I definitely want an edge there and I can maybe move this one forward just a bit. And then we want that one in the back. Might actually be better to add four, but I'll just do three now for simplicity. Now I also am going to need to add a ring going around this neck because if you consider the neck is also going to be able to crease, it's going to be able to bend forward. Not as much, but we also want to protect that from edge spiders as well. So we will add a ring of faces going around it. Again, I do want that UV map to be able to be mapped in this fashion here if I decide to place the UV map in that location. So I'll make sure I maintain this edge flow going along the top. So now that's set up there, let's go ahead and connect the arm to the neck. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now I could just create one face there and then maybe just add an edge here. So I'll go ahead Create one face in between those two, just add an edge. Now there's no simple way of going about connecting these. You just kind of have to get into it and play around with it until you get a setup that's going to work. So that's what I'm doing here essentially is I'm just adding some faces and trying to figure out how I can cr connect these two together. In fact, let's go ahead and bring our base all the way up to the top. Before we do that, we need to create an edge spider. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete these faces I created here and I'm going to bring the bottom up to the top. So in order to do that, we need to create an edge spider. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now I have this ring of faces that we created around the leg. Let's go ahead and add another ring inside of this. So I'm just going to hold down control and create another edge loop on the inside of it. Then I'm going to drag one of these faces out this way, and I'm going to drag this point sort of up a bit, and then I'm going to delete this one right here. Now with this deleted, I'll go ahead and add a point here and create a face here. And then I'll go ahead and add another point here and create another face here. Now I've essentially sort of leveled this off so it'll be easier to connect to the upper half, but I've also at the same time created an edge spider. Right here you can see there are five edges connecting to one point. There are one, two, three, four, five edges, and they're all connecting to this one point. That makes this an edge spider. Now, if you look at the leg in a typical formation, you're only going to have one, two, three, four edges connect to a point. An edge spider is anywhere where more than four edges connect to a single point. Those are very important to watch out for because you never want an edge spider 
to be anywhere you're planning on creasing your topology during animation. This is very important. It will cause oftentimes weird malformations, weird shading on your model if you put an edge spider in an area where the model is going to crease. This leg is going to be moving up towards the torso, making this face sort of crease into this face, and this face sort of crease into this face. And because of that, I don't want any of these points to have any more than four edges connecting into them. So I don't want spiders to be in this crease. Same thing with the arm, because it's going to be creasing right along this edge loop here. I don't want any of the points that make up that edge loop to have a spider in them. That's why I created this ring of faces going around them. Let's go ahead and create another spider back here. We'll go ahead and just delete this face in the back. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just drag this edge out here. And then we'll sort of drag this edge kind of up a bit. And then we'll add a point, create a face, add another point, create a face. And we've essentially created another spider right here. You can see a one, two, three, four, five edges. So this is an edge spider. So you got to watch out for the placement of those. Just remember, never put edge spiders in a crease somewhere where your ge geometry is going to be collapsing on top of itself during animation. So I'm going to sort of move some of these faces around, make them smooth up. Now I'm going to bring these up to the top so I can get this set up. Now there's no perfect way of doing this. There's no exact science towards connecting the bottom half of the geometry up to the top half. It's just a matter of playing around with it and fooling with the topology until you get something you like. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these two up. And you notice I'm just jumping clear up to the top and it's creating this huge malformation. It does not matter. I can go ahead and add an edge loop into it once I've got it up where I need it so I can work with it. So I'll go ahead and add an edge loop. You'll see it quickly takes the correct form. Now that's there, let's go ahead and start to try to figure out how I'm going to connect the bottom half to the top half. Now, there's no exact way of doing this. Again, it's just a matter of looking at it analyzing it and trying to figure out exactly where to put everything and it can be tricky I will not lie so we'll go ahead and get into it I'm just gonna try to figure out how I can connect these points together this one sort of goes along there I can maybe bring this down so I think I'll make this a little bit more simple to connect the two I'll go ahead and delete this ring here that's gonna take some of these edges away and I'll be able to maybe manipulate this a bit better so I could probably add an edge there edge there looks like this is coming together a lot easier than I expected it to. Now here we're going to wind up having a spider and that's okay because we've separated this from this. I could even separate it further by adding another ring in here. So and be careful you add it in the right spot. I could add another edge loop there and then I can drag this out and sort of drag this in some. That'll separate it even further from that spider that I'm about to create when I add this point here. So now I have a spider. There are five edges connecting to one point but it is nowhere near this edge loop going around the arm right here where it's going to fold down and these faces are going to crease into these. So I'm just being careful where I put these spiders. So that's good there. Now looking at this, it looks like I am going to run into a bit of a problem. I may have to be a little clever with this. I have to think about how I'm going to connect these two edges to this one edge. Well, I'm definitely going to have to add topology to do that. So I maybe can add an additional edge in here. And then now I have two edges, so I can quickly form that in. And there we go. I have essentially created the upper half. Now I'll have to clean up the topology a bit, add some additional edges to sort of get them better divided. I might even wind up deleting a bunch of these edges and sort of adding them in one at a time. So try to line them up better. But again, this is a matter of something you can do in between videos. Just try to clean your topology up. And as you can see, I did manage to get them connected. And all I'm doing now is just sort of moving edges and faces around to try to get a better flow about the model, make it look a little more natural. Again, you can also hold down shift to relax it, and that will sort of help it bend to the geometry that we are shaping on our live surface. So if you hold down shift and sort of move across it, you can sometimes get a better shape that way. I can move some of these faces to sort of shape around the shoulder a bit. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and end the video at this because these are all steps that you can take on your own. Just clean up your topology a bit. Just kind of get it all looking somewhat decent. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and talk about how we can quickly straighten up all of these vertices going in between the one side of the model. So that way we can quickly mirror it from one side over to the other side. 
If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.